Uh, real quickly, great to talk to wonderful people once again. My name is Rafael Yoseni, and I'll be sharing great insights as regards life. And this is something God has been putting in my heart for some time. And I've, I've been working about uh, on this for some time. And, and it's great just to finally to be able to share that insight now and help people out and help people get better and help people go uh, to that you know tremendous level they want to attain in life and, and glorify the name of God for that. So this it's going to be titled the Sacrifice Series. And I'm, I'm going to be sharing lots of insight. I've got about 10 episodes coming up in the series of just short messages, 10 minutes each and things like that. And this is very important. This is wonderful. So this is called the Sacrifice for Vision. And it has to be said that for every vision God has given to you as a person, you need that same level of sacrifice to be able to make it work in life. God gives us myriads of vision from generation to generation. Since the very start of the world, God has given us vision. The Garden of Eden was a key example. But it has to be said that there is a sacrifice that carries that vision. And whenever God gives you a vision, He gives you that commandment to be able to follow in tandem with the vision to make the vision a reality. So take, for instance, if God says, I want you to be tremendous, I want you to be successful, I want you to affect lives, he will tell you that, see, there are some things you shouldn't do. And that's something very important in the sacrifice of vision we fail to understand. And the sacrifice of vision is laid down in the commandment sector that God gives to every man for every vision he's got, both man or woman. And it, it has to be said very strongly that if you do not follow this, what you do, you do two things. You truncate the vision, you truncate the capacity to actualize the vision, and you cause other people to suffer. Because every vision given to you is not about you alone. It is more about the people tied to you, not you that are executing the vision. So in other words, you are just a conduit through with the channel of the vision goes to the world. It is not you performing the act. And a clear understanding of this helps you a great deal to be able to navigate your way through life. So when God gives you a vision, it's for the 1,000 people attached to you. It's just like when God gave me the Empowerment Series vision. He said, Rufai, this is not for you. And that's why I keep saying it's not about me. It's for the thousands of people that will be empowered by the virtue of what I do. But there are sacrifices you need to make and things you need to abide by. And be very weary of people that want to take your mantle, but they don't want to pass through your sacrifice. And that's why you have people that are not ready made for the top, and they get to the top because they are not ready to go through your sacrifice, and they want to take your mantle. For every level in life, there's a new devil. For every height you need to go to, there's a sacrifice you need to pass through. The sacrifice of your vision is even a more paramount part of the vision than any other part. But we live in a society where people are more concerned from the pecks of the vision rather than the sacrifice of the vision. I tell people, I don't trust a man that doesn't have scars to show me. Little wonder... There is no accidental success in life. Every accidental success is a failure. Be weary of overnight successes. They are failure waiting to happen. And it has to be understood here, effectively, that you cannot move on and you cannot achieve success without understanding the power of sacrifice. Little one, I'll be sharing, I'll be sharing a lot of sacrifice in this series. The sacrifice of inertia. The number one sacrifice for every great vision God gives you is to be able to work with God concerning what you do and how you do it. If you've lost capacity to work with God, then that sacrifice becomes null and void. And that's why God will show you things to come. He will show you the capacity you need to build upon because it is incumbent to you to understand these things as you work on that path of sacrifice. 
So your ability to work with a person that downloads the vision for you and shows you what the vision is all about is key in actualizing the sacrifice. But most, uh, the, the, the vision, but most people think that the sacrifice of working with God is not a void. So they can do it all alone in their lives. And then they make mistakes. And they forget a lot. They think it's about themselves. They forget that many visions are tied to them. And another thing, you need to watch what you do now. Because if you don't watch what you do, what you do might bring you down faster before you even think of watching it. I'm going to share three great stories before I wrap up this session. The number one story was a man that was given the vision to be that beacon of hope to modern-day France. His name, Dominique Strauss-Kahn. Oh, he was educated he was a liberator. He was somebody people loved in France. But he had a vice all along. The vice was women. And he continued in this regard. I'm not saying people don't make mistakes. But the earlier you make your mistake and the earlier you get out of it is better. And pray that your mistakes be not, not become that mistake that becomes too costly for you to get out of. Mr. Strauss-Kahn had been making mistakes with women over the years. But there was just one mistake that he felt were other mistakes too. That was too hard for him to get out of. And that was a mistake he made with Sefunutu Muhammad, the chamber maid in a hotel in New York. Mr. Strauss-Kahn had just resigned his position as the chairman of the IMF, International Monetary Fund, wonderful position, had global traction. And officially, he wanted to fly to France that day to officially declare his intention to run for presidency under the socialist platform, which he would have won easily with no hassles. And he came out of his toilet room. He saw this maid, Sefina to Mohammed. He winked at her. He tried to force himself on her. He had been doing it long ago. And only God knows what happened there. But fast forward the story. Dominic Strauss-Kahn, the chairman of the IMF, a very powerful man, was about to board a flight from America to France. And police officers said he will not board that plane. And they brought him down and they imprisoned him. I was with a French lady then. And she cried so badly that France has lost the liberator. She wailed out and wept as the BBC announced that Dominic Strauss-Kahn had been arrested. As a result of that, the case started back and forth. It was pushed under house arrest. Court cases here and there. It stopped Dominic Strauss-Kahn's presidential ambition. And we all know the story afterwards. Another unknown man, Francois Hollande, ran under the socialist platform and finally became president of France. Dominique Strauss-Kahn was that president France never had because he forgot that the vision was for God and not about himself. So he lost out. Imagine the number of people Dominic Strauss-Kahn would have helped if he finally became the president of France. He was a numerate, an intellectual to the core, had blazing ideas. He imagined the number of people who would have helped and brought out of poverty. Today, unemployment is still rife in France. There's still a lot affecting the French economy. But just because of one minute mistake, he ruined a long destiny. He cannot run for political positions again. The scandal is everywhere in the world. In fact, all the work he did at IMF, nobody remembers Dominic Strauss-Kahn again just for one minute. So you have to understand that the sacrifice of staying away from things that deter your vision matters a great deal. You ready to make that sacrifice today? I'll keep sharing insight like this. Keep watching this space. It's going to change your world. If this message has changed you, share it with other people.